Hello dear students. The topic of today's video is how to write a research article. Although there isn't a single pattern for writing a research article, but if you follow the one that is used by most of the researchers, there are greater chances of having your article accepted. And in general, if you have just started writing your research articles, it's better to use a pattern that has high acceptance rate and is generally followed by most of the established researchers. However, with experience, you may want to modify this pattern, but for now, to begin, I think it's a good plan to write your first few research papers. So, let's just get started. Since you have come this far, so you must have read multiple research papers and you must be very familiar with the different sections of a research paper. At the top you have the title and the authors along with their affiliations, then abstract, introduction, literature review or, or background study, the proposed work, results, discussion, conclusion and references. So we are going to talk about each one of them and I'm going to give you a plan that you can follow in order to write your research article. So let's get started with abstract. We are skipping the title and authors for now and we may come to it as the last part of modifying your article. You may draft a title at the start of writing a paper. However, you must revisit your title as the last part of your paper as well in case it needs any modifications. So let's break down the code for writing abstract. Abstract is like a summary of the whole research paper and that is going to give a reviewer an idea of what you have done in this research work. This is generally the gateway to your work after the title that a reader may want to decide whether to continue with your paper or not. So in order to write a good concise abstract, I have written these sentences that you should write in your abstract in exactly the same order. So in the first sentence, you would introduce the broad area of your research. Now you must keep in mind that the broad area of your research is basically the point from where you should start your literature study. And you should also keep in mind that how well known that broad area is in the research community. For example, if you have proposed an improved classification of fake news detection, then you may start with classification. You may have started with machine learning also, but then you would also need to discuss the different other types of machine learning approaches and since classification already is a very well known type of techniques, so you may start with classification. So in that case, the first sentence of your abstract would be about classification in one sentence, how classification or supervised learning works in general. In the second sentence, you should write about the applications, usefulness and impact of your research work. The objective of this sentence is to ensure why it is important to have improvement or modifications in this specific research area. So the second sentence is like the marketing of your research area that how it is making life better and what are the different useful applications of this area. In the third sentence, you should present the main types of approaches that are being used for this type of problems. Now again, if we go to that specific example of fake news detection, so you may write that in classification because we have already established the baseline as classification. So you may write that one type of classification approaches is to follow a connectionist approach or the neural networks. The other type of approach is to follow probabilistic approach and so on. Then in the fourth sentence, you should write state of the art latest approaches in that particular problem. Now these are the approaches with which you are most probably going to compare your results. In the fifth sentence, you should write the problem or the gap in research that you are going to address. Now the fifth sentence should be in connection with the fourth one that in those latest approaches that we have discussed in sentence four, and here you should discuss 
what generally is the problem or gap in those approaches that we have discussed in sentence 4. Generally, we do not want to improve the model given by a specific paper because in that case the contribution is going to be so narrowed down that it may not be very useful in general. So therefore, the problem statement should not identify the problem of a single paper but multiple papers that are addressing a specific task. Now in the sixth sentence, what is your strategy with which you are going to fill this gap, address this problem? So the sixth sentence should be about the proposed methodology that how you are going to address this problem and fix this gap. You may take another sentence if you feel that you cannot write the whole methodology in a single sentence. The last sentence of your abstract should be the results that you have obtained on the data set which should be the benchmark in that area and on what evaluation techniques are you claiming that your approach is better as compared to the existing approaches. So that is basically the map of your abstract. Now many people would argue that you should write abstract as the last part of your research paper. But if you are not writing abstract as the first part of your paper, then you need to have an outline or a roadmap based on which you are going to write your paper because writing a paper is not something that you are going to do in a single setting so therefore you need a plan so that when you come back you can resume it from there from where you left in the last setting. So why not write an abstract and you may modify the changes that you may have later on and it's not a big investment the structure is going to be the same if your proposed model has slightly changed the results have slightly changed so you can just modify those specific sentences. Now next we come to introduction. After you have your abstract as the outline of your research paper, you may start writing your introduction. Now after having a look at this slide, I'm going to switch back to the slide where we have the outline for abstract. And now we come back to introduction. So what has happened? We have changed the sentences into paragraphs. So the first paragraph is going to be the broad area of that particular research. So now you may write about classification or supervised learning in multiple sentences and explain how it works. Again, not getting into a specific classification technique, not getting into the technicalities of a specific classification technique, but rather you should talk about classification or supervised learning in general. That is how it learns about patterns in the past experience with reference to the labels that are provided, how patterns are identified and how it is used to forecast or predict labels for the unseen instances. In this paragraph, you generally cite the latest survey papers in the area or the breakthrough papers related to your work. The second paragraph of your paper as we said is going to be about the usefulness of this particular area that how classification based approaches is helping people with different types of problems and may mention few of its specific applications. Now over here the number of paragraphs may depend on the length of your article for example if you are submitting your paper to a conference then it's rather going to be of shorter length as compared to the one that you are submitting to journal. So in that case, if you have limitation on the number of pages, so paragraph one and two may be merged as your first paragraph. In that case, you may just end your first paragraph by writing a couple of sentences on the applications or usefulness of this broad area. The third sentence, as I said, if I'm talking about classification, so here I should mention what are the existing approaches in classification. In case I'm starting with fake news classification, so in that case my broad area is going to be fake news classification and then I should be giving applications and usefulness of fake news classification. And then the existing approaches should discuss the different classification approaches that are being used for fake news detection. And conversely, if I'm starting with fake news detection or classification is my broad area, then it should also be part of my title. 
and then I may write something specific in the title that how I'm doing fake news detection or classification with modification in such and so approach. Then the existing approaches must start with fake news classification. So we may mention the different types of approaches that are being used for fake news classification. As I said, the connectionist approaches, the probabilistic models, the logic based models, etc. And then we may write a couple of sentences on each of those types of approaches. But if you are writing a paper, it means you have already conducted your experiments and results and you already have modification in a specific type of approaches. So for example, if my approach is based on improvement in the neural networks, so I'll write a couple of sentences about the probabilistic classification approaches used for fake news detection. I may write a couple of sentences about the logic based approaches for fake news classification or detection and then a couple of lines about the neural network based approaches. Now I should end this paragraph with remarks that are not in favor of the probabilistic and logic based approaches or I should write a couple of sentences that are in favor of neural networks based approaches for this specific problem. And this is because I am setting the platform for the coming paragraphs that are going to be more in detail about neural networks because I am going to mention the state of the art in neural networks and then my modification is also in the same set of approaches. So before I switch to neural networks, I must mention what are the other dimensions and why I am not going with those dimensions and going with this specific one. So you should have a counter argument at each step when you are going with a specific approach. So you should have these counter reasoning sentences each time you are going with a specific option when there are multiple. Now as I said depending upon the length of your article you may have the next paragraph about the latest approaches in neural networks and take that to deep neural networks or deep sequence neural networks all in a single paragraph. Otherwise, you may break it into two or three paragraphs. Then the next paragraph should explain why the existing deep sequence models, RNN models or LSTM models, whatever you are mentioning as your state of the art is having this specific issue or problem and is having, and is having this gap that you want to fill. So over here, you would mention that gap with specific to a scenario that you are assuming, for example, LSTMs may be doing quite well, but you may mention that we have limited computational resources or storage capacity and we want to have a model that would achieve similar accuracy while consuming much limited resources. So now you are not basically finding out the problem in LSTMs itself, but you are basically considering a scenario in which LSTMs and the other set of the art may not be a good choice. In other ways, you may consider an open world scenario where you may have instances in the test set that may not have representation in the training set. So how you are going to address that? Now you may pick this specific scenario and see how it is possible in real world just to establish why this problem is important and then you may mention that the existing state of the art approaches do not consider this situation where a test instance may be out of the training data. So therefore, we need to pick a specific scenario with respect to which we are assessing the state of the art approaches. As we know that a single solution may not perform well in all types of scenarios. So therefore, if you have that specific scenario in mind, you may assess the quality of the state of the art models and mention that as the gap in the latest research. The same way you may try state of the art approaches with small data sets to see how they perform. You may try them with missing values, with outliers in the data and if those state of the art models are tested on data sets that do not have these issues, you may have that as your problem statement that these approaches, although they are doing so well with the other data sets, but if we have such and so problems with the data sets, these approaches are not doing well and now I'm going to modify them or come up with something that is going to approach this problem and that is going to achieve similar accuracy while the data set has all these issues. Now the proposed model where you are basically 
modifying the state of the art approaches by introducing some new equations, formulas, algorithms that is going to particularly address this problem. So you may write about it in one or two paragraphs. Finally, the last paragraph of your introduction should be about the data sets that you are using, the evaluation techniques that you are going to use in order to compare your results with state of the art approaches and that should be the end of your introduction. Again, depending upon the length, you may combine the proposed approach with the last paragraph that is the data sets and the evaluation. The same way problem statement may be combined with the paragraph above it that is the latest research work. So depending upon the required length of the article, you may decide whether to, whether to have separate paragraphs or merge them, but the sequence is going to be very much the same. Next we come to literature review or the background of your research work. Here you would mention all the articles that you have studied and that are in relevance to the problem that you are addressing. Now again, it's my personal opinion that you should start your literature review with a dendrogram of the literature that you have studied and that is going to give the reader a holistic view of what he's going to expect in this section. So in my opinion, it should look something like this. The title is the taxonomy of the literature that I have studied for such and so problem and over here I have mentioned the root node is the main literature problem that is the broad area then what are the different types of approaches that are being used in this area so we have multiple nodes at the next level the broad approach is my root node and then as we go down the hierarchy the lower nodes are more specific approaches in that area now the areas that i'm not following as i said earlier i may just mention their name or just one or two papers in that area and that should be enough. I should not expand that side of the tree anymore. I should only be focused on the part of the tree that I am exploring where I am introducing my own modification. So I should take that side of the tree and take it to the latest approaches mentioning them as the leaf nodes. Now to summarize this. I may not need to expand the other nodes that I am not going with as I said earlier in the introduction part that you may just write a counter statement and not further go with that approach that what are the sub approaches in that direction. So over here also we would just give it a node, mention a, a popular survey area in that area and would not further expand that node. We are only going to expand the nodes that we are having our contribution in. So once you have this dendrogram of the literature that you are that you have covered in this paper, the reader has the overlook of what he is going to expect in this section. So now you may just expand on the third, fourth and fifth paragraph of your introduction and stretch that into multiple paragraphs. So you may just start with the existing research in that area and now you may go to the specific techniques and the specific models given in papers and you may cite those papers and write few lines about their working. So literature review is more technical as compared to introduction where the introduction should be written in such a way that even someone who is not from this area should understand the core idea while literature review is basically for people who are from this domain or who want to have in-depth understanding of this domain. So you should go to these specific techniques mentioned in the papers and you should also discuss their limitations. And it should be in the chronological order that how that limitation is being addressed by the next set of papers and then the next and they should keep on adding those papers, discussing their internal working, mentioning their limitation and that should lead you to your problem statement or gap in the latest research that you should write either as part of the last paragraph or a separate paragraph of itself which should be the last paragraph of your literature review. So that's how your literature review should be organized. You have the dendrogram as your roadmap and you should follow that particular structure in writing. The next section of your research paper is the proposed work. Here you are going to write about the contribution that you have made. So to begin this section you should write about the architecture of your 
proposed work. That is the big picture where you have made your contribution. For example, if my contribution is some improvement in lifelong machine learning approaches, so I should present something like this, that is an overview or the big picture or the framework that I have modified. Now, I didn't came up with all the modules of this architecture, but my modification is going to be in a specific module of this architecture. But before going to into that module, it's very important to give the big picture or the complete architecture where my proposed solution is going to fit. And then in the next subsection of the proposed work, I should write about that specific modification that I have made. Now, as you saw the architecture, in that architecture, I might have modified a specific part. I might have introduced one algorithm in that complete flow. And the rest of the components or modules are something that were already there in the literature or already in practice. So I have got that architecture, I have presented it, and then I have pointed out what modification I have made in that particular architecture that has addressed this problem that we mentioned earlier. So the second section where I'm talking about the specific modification that I have made, I should begin with the algorithm. Now this algorithm should not focus the complete architecture, but just that particular section where I have made my modifications. So it should present the line by line process of how I have addressed that particular problem or how I have made that specific modification. The algorithm must be explained in a couple of paragraphs where I should write in detail how the algorithm is working and what we are doing in each of those lines. In this commentary or discussion of the algorithm, I should also mention the equations that I'm using in my algorithm. Now, if you are introducing your own specific equations, you must present them and you should also mention it in such a way that the reader should get the idea that these equations are your contribution. In some cases, you may also use the equations that are already there and you are making them part of your algorithm in a different way. In that case, you may want to you may want to write the equations in your paper with the reference if the equations are not that popular. In some cases, the equations or the names of the techniques are so well known in a research domain that writing those equations may not be necessary and just mentioning their name with the proper reference should be sufficient. So in this section, you have given a complete overview of your proposed work and then the specific technical details of how you have made those modifications. Next we come to the experimental results. Now again you may have the experimental results and discussion or analysis as different sections or you may merge them and write as results and discussion to have them as a single section. It depends on the content that you have and that you want to present in this section and also the limitation on the number of pages. Now as we start writing about the experiments and results, we should write few lines about how the experiments were set up. Again, if it's a long paper, we may have a couple of paragraphs on it and give it a specific subheading of experimental setup. Otherwise, we may just write few lines about it and move on to the results. In experimental setup, we talk about the hyperparameters, the resources, the training and test split, and everything that we have provided to the proposed approach and the state-of-the-art approaches with which we are going to compare our results. So this is basically to establish that we are giving every technique common grounds in order to perform well. Then we present the results and again it's my personal opinion that you should have the results in the form of a table and then you should also present those tables in the form of graphs. Otherwise you may just have the graphs and you may want to skip tables, that's up to you. And then we should write at least one paragraph about each table or figure that we have in this section. So if I have a figure, I should have a paragraph that explains what this figure is having, what we have along the x-axis, what we have along the y-axis, how the lines and bars are having specific values, 
what is the minimum value, the maximum value. And the same way, if I'm having a table, I should have as many paragraphs as the number of tables. Or in other words, I should have a single paragraph for each table as well that should mention what this table is representing, what are the different columns, what are the different rows, and anything specific about certain values that we have in that table. So over here, we should write the comparisons that our approach is giving such and so value while the others are giving these values. We may also want to mention the minimum and maximum values of these approaches. In case our approach is not doing well, we may also present its value. However, we would not want to elaborate too much on that. Then in the discussion or the analysis part, we need to provide justifications that why such results are obtained. So over here, we would provide reasoning that why our approach is getting certain high values that we presented earlier with graphs and tables. If the value is relatively low on certain occasions, so why it is so? We try to bake our results with some reasoning that why we are getting these results, why our approach is doing well. With this, we come to the conclusion part of our research. Over here, we write about the findings that we had in this research work, how our modification has addressed the problem that we have in hand. Again, not in more than a couple of sentences. Then we may also mention the assumptions or the limitations of our approach and some of the future directions with which this approach may further be improved. The future work is also important for new researchers who may want to work in your area. It's a good thing for having more citations and it's also a reminder for yourself at how you may proceed with this work in your coming papers. Because at this stage you have just performed the experiments and you have done the write-up, so you are in a better position to think ahead that what else could be done with this approach. You are very much aware of the limitations of your approach, so documenting them at this stage is a good option. And why not share them with everyone? Finally, we have the references. So for references, the styling or formatting is generally provided by where you are going to submit your work. Uh, just double check on the information that you are getting about your research papers because if you are searching them on Google Scholar, uh, not every paper have all the details information available. Some of the papers may have their volume number, issue number, page numbers missing and therefore you need to do a little bit extra research, identify that information and put them in your article. A general suggestion is to include few relevant papers from the journal that you are submitting to and you should also include a couple of popular papers or breakthrough papers in that area as well. And the rest of the papers would be pretty much that we have covered in the literature review. So that was about how to write a research paper. I hope it would be of help to you in writing your research article. You may apply this plan to writing research grant your thesis, a conference paper, a journal paper, the flow is going to be the same if you are writing your thesis. So you may think of one paragraph as two or three paragraphs. So just have this roadmap in mind and you may vary the length of your article according to the need. That was all about this video. Thanks for watching.